Thomas Grillo, and welcome to Theremin Review. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the LV3 Theremin by Lost Volts, a company located in the United Kingdom which has been making theremins and other items for, oh, about 10, 15 years. But they're just now starting to go online with their website, www.lostvolts.com. This particular theremin is really cool. In fact, a friend of mine says it looks fantastically British. And that explains the flag because it is from the United Kingdom. This theremin features full capabilities of any theremin. It has your pitch aerial and your volume aerial. And you have a beautiful small compact theremin case. The cabinet is made of aluminum as are the antennas. And if we take a look at this part of the theremin, we'll see that, I'll just spin it around for you. We have an AC adapter, or mains, connects right here. And we have our audio line out. So we can run that to our amplifier. The pitch aerial just threads on nice and easily with a, with a tiny screw. I'll just go ahead and demonstrate that for you. Just like that. And there's a little eye protector right here on the tip of the antenna, so that stops you poking your eye out if you have your theremin mounted too low. I like to have my theremins just below chest height, and that, that kind of stops that problem right there as well. Your volume loop just connects very easily. It just slips right into the instrument. I'll just demonstrate that. It's a spring-loaded type volume loop. And it just holds in place by friction, just like that. And by the way, there's a nice blue power LED on this instrument, so you know good and well that this instrument is powered up. Speaking of power, if you don't want to use the mains, you can power this theremin on a 9-volt battery. And it's very easy to install. You just take out four screws from the volume antenna panel side, slip off the panel, and there's a metal plate underneath the theremin where the rubber feet are located. And you just slide that out to the side to expose the battery compartment and pop in your battery, and you're off and running. But it is important to note that you will need a grounded amplifier to get the full capability of the theremin. Otherwise, you'll need to find another way to ground the, uh, the theremin so that you can expand your field out to the fullest width. Right, I think I've got that bit of the demonstration taken care of. So let's go on to hearing the theremin. On this instrument, we have three controls. We have our volume antenna control. That controls our dynamic volume. Then we have, and this the sound operators are going to love this one. We have the line level volume output, which controls the output of the theremin. So if you're a line, if you're a soundboard operator, you can actually ask the thereminist to turn the volume down or up, and it's not going to muck about with the dynamic volume. And that's important because the thereminist will likely have their theremin set up to uh, perform a certain way. And if you go up to their theremin and turn that volume antenna knob down on them, they're not going to be very happy. So this actually is a very big help for soundboard operators on stages or in the filmmaking industry, etc. And so we'll go ahead and adjust that and get that ready for playing. Our third control is our pitch aerial. This controls the width of the field and basically, all we do is, when we turn this knob anti-clockwise, it's going to cause the field to shrink. And if we turn the, the knob clockwise, it's going to cause the field to expand. And of course, with, just with all theremins, you have three zones, the plus, the zero, and the negative beat zones. And uh, if I set the theremin up just right, you can actually hear that. Thank you. 
If you move your hand toward the antenna and you hear the pitch going down, then you know you've got to expand your field because you're in the negative beat zone. And so you want to adjust the, the knob clockwise to spread out your field. And I like to have my field situated just about here over the volume loop. Just like that. And this allows us full access to the instrument. This particular theremin has nearly seven octaves of range. Unfortunately, because it's a progressively nonlinear instrument, the highest octaves are going to be very close together near the antenna. In fact, the highest octave to an octave and a half are about this far apart near the antenna. But then the rest of the field, which is about five and a half to six octaves worth, you have full access to that very easily. And I'll just give you a quick rundown of the uh, octave ranging. I think my tea's ready. So there you have approximately seven octaves worth of theremin pitch field with the highest octaves being not so easily accessible, but the rest of the field being quite playable. Now, if you want to play the theremin melodically, I found that this theremin works best when you play music that is pitched for alto, baritone, or tenor, and bass. In fact, this instrument really shines in the bass range. I was amazed that this instrument has such a really good bass. It's very powerful. And my temperature in my room has changed, so my pitch field has, has just shrunk. I'll just bring that out some more. There we go. So you can hear it's got a really good bass to it. And then of course you have your mid-ranges. And the higher ranges. I'll just do a quick glissando so you can hear how that sounds. Now theremins are quite sensitive to temperature changes in, in a room. So you do have to be prepared for that with any theremin and adjust accordingly. All right, now on back to the volume antenna control knob. This knob not only controls how sensitive the volume antenna is, but it also allows you to dial in a cool effect. You can, you can adjust this knob to about the 10 or 11 o'clock position, and when you start getting your volume hand up to a certain height above the antenna, you start bringing in a really cool effect.
So you can get some really cool energy hums going here. Or a good electric guitar kind of sound. And the more you turn the volume knob clockwise, the closer that effect is going to come to the volume loop. So you get that effect a lot sooner. Now I've got the volume antenna knob set to about the one or two o'clock position. And as you can hear, you can actually get the theremin to go a little bit multi-timbral. So you can hear a really interesting effect going here. So that's pretty cool, and if you turn it all the way clockwise, then the effect kicks in almost instantly. I like to run it with the volume knob set to about the 10 or 11 o'clock position if I'm going to use effects. That gives me control over more of the dynamic range of the volume field. And so there you have the LV3 Theremin by Lost Volts. Stay tuned next time when we'll be taking a look at the Moog Music Etherwave Standard. That's next time on Theremin Review. Thank you and have a good day. Theremin Radio Network. Theremin.